Okay, so this is our, our, our video on internal loading and specifically internal axial shear moment diagrams. And, uh, um, and what we'll do, the first thing we're going to do is describe positive sign convention for internal loading. That's the way we want to do it. Then we want to be able to describe or explain, or we're going to describe slash derive by example, uh, describe the relationship, the relationship between shear and moment, shear and moment, and moment, and I don't, and loading, oh, and loading, I guess, yeah, and loading, shear, moment, shear, load, sh between shear and loading, and moment and loading, okay, and so um, I'll write those equations for you, and then I'll show you by example, like how, how to, uh, to do that, and then we'll talk a little bit about, and then we'll draw, uh, draw, Hopefully, by this, we'll explain how to draw uh, shear and moment diagrams graphically. Shear, oh, and axial force diagrams. We'll do axial force. So P, V, and M diagrams graphically. Okay. Graphically. Although, I guess the axial force diagram, you can't really do graphically. Anyway, well, we'll, we'll see how it goes. All right. So here... Let's see. Let's talk about first, you know, we have, let's consider, consider a beam, right? And so this beam, this beam will have, let's say, we'll just take a beam here. Uh, let me make it, let me not make it too complicated. So I'll just make it simply supported beam for now. Okay. And we'll say the loading is all right so we have this externally applied load i'll call that like uh um, shoot i'll call it h like a concentrated horizontal load and then i could have a distributed load maybe for half the beam right here and then i would have maybe let's even throw in like a concentrated moment right here so i'll call this like m0 and w like that yeah and, and so what happens is that, you know, no matter what I do, if I make a cut somewhere, okay, when I make a cut, I, I want to be able to determine what is quote unquote positive or negative internal loading, okay? And so when I make this cut here, when I make this cut right here, bam, like this, I have in a 2D diagram, 2D, where I have only transverse loading, okay? I'm, I'm not gonna say that there is any, um, there's no, uh, you know, torque or anything applied to this, okay? So for, we're gonna neglect torque or torsion. So it's just 2D loading. You know, I ha I'm gonna have some reaction here and here like this, okay? And, uh, um, and this on the inside, what I have is I'm gonna have at this cut an internal shear, okay? Internal shear. An internal normal force or axial force and an internal moment at that cut okay this this orientation of this cut the way that I've drawn this here a lot of textbooks use as positive sign convention okay so that if if I look if I look at a cut and I look at the left side of the cut and the shear is down that is considered positive internal shear if I do my calculations and that positive shear goes the, the the shear arrow goes the other way, that would be a negative internal shear. Same thing here. If my normal force, its axial force, is going away from the cut, that's considered positive normal force. And if if the arrow, if after I do my equilibrium calculations, it goes the other way, that would be negative. Okay. And the same thing here. This moment right here. If, if it causes compression on the top half of the beam, that's considered positive. Okay? Yeah? Okay. And so here on the other side of this cut, this two, whatever the loading is, I have some external loading again and some reaction here. Oops. Some reaction here as well and this concentrated moment M0. And again, internally positive, this would be on the right side of the cut. Right here, this would be that V, okay? And you can see from the cut, they're equal and opposite. 
all the all the internal loadings are equal and opposite at the cut, right? Depending on the side of the cut you're looking at. And just to make that analogy with our, our truss analysis, in our method of sections, when we did the truss, we made a cut through the whole structural system, right? And we cut through three unknowns because we need three equilibrium equations to solve for these unknowns. Okay. Okay, great. All right. So that's that's one thing. So this is this is important because this is what we call internal positive sign convention. So whenever you're doing an analysis for the internal loading, whenever you make this cut at that point, you want to make sure that this is how you draw it to start before you do the equilibrium equations and solve for what the actual values are. All right. All right. Next. Okay. Next, we have the relationship between shear and moment. So we'll do a simple one. Let's do a simple one first. So here, this is that second objective relationship okay, between shear and moment. And I'm not gonna, I'm not going to try to derive this for you or anything. All right. But here, I'll do, I'll use a simple example. Okay. So let's take a cantilever beam right here, like this. And let's take this right here, right here. And let's say we have a, uh, Uniformly distributed load, W, okay? And, and do you remember how to draw shear functions and moment functions? Okay, well, this, this is important. This is how I'm going to show you, by doing shear functions and moment functions, okay? And we'll say that this, is, this has a beam with a length L right here. This is a distributed load right here. And I'm going to say that my X direction, I want to find, I'm going to call this zero and i'm gonna say my x-axis goes this way okay that's my x direction all right and so what i want to do right now is i want to find my internal shear and moment functions okay i'm gonna find my internal shear and moment function so here right here the the first thing i should probably do is in this case, you don't have to, but normally what you normally want to do is calculate the reactions. Calculate reactions right here. Okay. And so here, if I calculate reactions, I know that I would have at this support, I'll call this point A, call this point B right here. I would have at this reaction, I would have an AY, uh, AX, and a MA. I'm going to go up like this. I'm going to draw it like that. Okay. And so I can solve for those reactions. So let's see if I do... Uh, some of the forces in the vertical, and I'll say this is equal to zero. That tells me Ay minus W times L equals zero. So Ay equals W times L. Okay. If I do some of the forces in the X equals zero, and I say this is positive, I get minus Ax equals zero, which means Ax equals zero. And... And if I want to find MA, some of the moments about this end A equal to zero, right? And I say uh, counterclockwise is positive, so I would have a minus MA, the re moment reaction at point A, uh, minus W times L, that's the force, times the distance from that point, so that's L over 2 equal to zero. And that tells me MA is negative WL squared over 2. And the negative just means that that moment arrow should be going the other direction. Okay. All right. Very good. Okay. And, and so now if I want to calculate my moment function too. So in this case, I'm going to show you that we don't, we didn't need the moment. Fun we didn't need to calculate it, but here uh, to this next part would be the moment function mo or shear and moment function. And what I want, the way, the way you want to do this is, is right here is is look at this and say okay if i because you don't know what x is right it's x is some open variable so you say if i want to cut at some distance x okay so instead of looking at, at x like this you say let me cut because i want to make this as a function of x let me cut at some distance x right here so i'm going to cut right here which is some distance x okay or some like five feet away if i want to give it a number right and I draw a free body diagram of that cut. So I have here, bam, 
I have the uniformly distributed load like this. And I have this cut here at some distance x. Okay, and this is still w, the uniformly distributed load. And my internal, I, I'm going to draw here internally positive, right? My moment would be like this. Cut. My shear would be pointing up. Let me let me make sure I get these labels correct. I give some space for this. This would be my shear, my moment, and I would have an internal normal force. Okay. And I'm going by the variable x here, some distance x. Okay. And so now I apply the equilibrium equations right here. So I would say some of the forces in the horizontal equal to zero. And that tells me that n equals zero for all x. Okay. At at this distance, quote unquote, x. Okay. Then I do some of the forces in the y equal to zero or in the vertical, and I would have V minus W times X equals zero. And that tells me that V is equal to W times X. All right. And that's that's this is my shear function. Shear function right here. Oh shoot. Okay. I'm about to show you something kind of messed up, okay? And then here, some of the moments equal to zero, and I go this way like this, and my moment would be minus m minus w times x times x over 2 equal to zero. And that tells me m is equal to minus w x squared over 2. Okay. Yeah, that seems all right. Yeah? Okay. Now, if I asked you, what is the relationship between the distributed load and the shear function, what would you tell me? No, no, no. Like, so here, if I could do, not distance or anything, but yes, yeah, I agree. Oh, well, yeah, there's distance, right? But mathematically or by calculus, if I had the shear function, what would I need to do to get this distributed load? I, I would take the antiderivative of W, right? Or take the derivative of the shear function, right? So if I took, so here, if I took uh, dV dx, that gives me W. Yeah, right? And that's that's the relationship between the distributed loading and, and, the, sh and the shear, okay? Or uh, the other way that people say it is that dv is equal to w dx, which also means that the change in shear or the is equal to the area or the integral, right? The area area of distributed load. Okay, right here, and and so if I looked at this relationship, what would you tell me the relationship is between the shear and moment diagram? You, you might say the – well, what would just be the relationship between these two? Derivative of the – if I take the derivative of the moment, I would get – I would get negative V. Yeah? Okay? All right. So that that's 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 what we observe in our calculations. Okay, that's what we observe in our calculations is that that this right here occurs. Now, what you're going to see in in various textbooks. Okay, this is what you'll see in textbooks, and I'll tell you why in a second. In textbooks, what you're going to see is that dv dx is equal to a minus w, and you're going to see dm dx equals v. Do you know why? All right, think about it. Okay, think about it for a second right here. It's all suspenseful, suspenseful in the video. <laughs> it's all messed up, right? But here, look, look, okay, so just to com complete these notes, if you will, right here. It, this, this also, you know, if I could do dm is equal to uh, uh, minus V dx, right? And that just means delta M is equal to the negative of the area of distributed load. Okay? All right. The reason we have a negative sign here is because when we went 
when we did this derivation, if you will, this example problem, we went from right to left. This right here is from right to left like this. We use this notation for plus x. In all the textbooks, in the derivations, the derivation is plus x to the right. Okay? So in, essentially, these equations are for shear and moment diagrams going from left to right. Whereas here, these equations that we just kind of came up with are for shear and moment diagrams going from right to left. Yeah? This is quote unquote backwards, right? If, if you're using the textbook as the forward direction, okay? Or the way we read in, in, in America, right? Left to right. But, so I, and I'll, I'll prove this to you right now, is if I take this exact same drawing, I, I have a cut at X and now I look at the left side, okay? And this time, let me define this right here, going this way as X1, okay? A different X coordinate system, okay? So here, if I do my free body diagram, and I, I go, so this time, going from left to right, if I look at my shear and moment functions, check this out, it's gonna be beautiful, okay? It's like this. Here's my cut right here. I still have the distributed loading. Okay, I have that distributed loading. There's my cut. This is at the cut at X2 or X1. Sorry, X1. Let's make sure we stay X1 right here. This is still W. I have a moment. I have, uh, I calculated my reactions. Let's see, AY was WL and it's pointing upwards. So I, I'm good with that. So here, there's a WL here. And then we had a negative moment. We had this negative WL squared over two, which means even though that means it's opposite, you know, the way we drew it, right? We drew this compression at the top initially, but it's telling me that the arrow should be reversed. So that means the actual sense of this arrow is here wl squared over 2 and notice i don't have the negative sign okay otherwise if i put a negative sign here i'm meaning the arrow you know it's all it's going to get all messed up so i have this here here's i have my cut i'm looking at the left side of my cut this time my shear internal shear positive is downwards here's my moment and here is my normal force okay i go through the process again i do equal sum of the forces equal to zero in the horizontal it tells me the normal force is still equal to zero or the internal axial diagram is zero sum of the forces in the vertical equal to zero and it would tell me that i have wl minus w times x1 equals oops minus v equals zero yeah Okay, and that means V is equal to WL minus W times X1. Okay, and then if I sum moments equal to zero, I go this way like this right here. And if I sum moments, then in this case, I would have, let's see, I'd have WL squared over 2 plus W. I'm going to sum moments about that point right here just to make sure that's clear. Okay, I'll call that O. Okay, so W times X1 times X1 over 2, oops, X1 over 2, yes? yes? Plus M minus WL times X1. You agree with that? Equals 0. I have to, I have to yeah. take the moment contribution from here, right? So I have this one. I have the, the resultant W times X times X over X1 over 2, and then this WL times X1, right? Because all those induce a moment about this, about, about this point right here, all these things, okay? And so my moment function, which is a lot more complicated this time, is, let's see here, uh, let's see, W, oh, W, Let's put negative signs minus WL squared over 2 plus WL times X1 minus WX1 squared over 2. Was that, yeah? Okay, wow. Woo, okay. 
And now if I asked you the relationship between the shear diagram, the shear diagram and the distributed loading, what would you say that is? It, you, if you took the derivative dv dx right here, if you take the derivative of the shear diagram, you would get minus w. Yes. yes. W L is a constant. That derivative would go to zero for dv dx right here, and then this would just go to negative w. Then I take, and so before we said now, how would I get from here to here? And if I take the derivative of this right here, if I take the derivative of this, let's see here, I would have, uh, this would be zero, so dm dx, this would be zero, this would just be wl, and that would be uh, wx, right? So I would have wl minus wx1 right here, right here, okay? And, and this is just the shear diagram, the shear function, which we said, aha, right here, when we go right to left, here's the derivation. When we go left to right, here is the relationship. Okay? All right. So, so if you can believe, right, these relationships, and all, this is the way the textbooks present it, right? And this one, the only th difference is that we, choose a we chose a coordinate system going left to right. Okay, this means the exact same thing, okay? It, it, and, and this is the basis for which we do things graphically. Okay, so here, going from, from left to right now, okay? So here it just says that the change, this thing also says that the change in shear is equal to the area, the negative area of the distributed loading right here. And the change in moment is equal to the area, oops, under the shear diagram. Mm -hmm. Area under the shear, because it's an integral, okay? And, and it says the slope, this also says the slope of the shear diagram is equal to the negative of the distributed load value. The slope of the moment diagram is equal to the value of the shear. Okay, the value of the shear. All right. And uh, um, and you had other cases. Okay, you had other cases where you had, if you had, for instance, a beam and you had a concentrated force right here, what this, what this did was it created a, you know, I don't know where you are at the shear. Let's say you are like, oh, shoot, who knows, right? Maybe here we'll say it's like this, okay? So this is positive shear, all positive shear. So what ha would happen is when you draw the shear diagram here, you'd have V, there would be a V1, let's call that V1, V2, and this is like P right here. You would have uh, um, V1, this p this dip p right there and then you would have you know this would be v2 yeah, yeah. okay it's the it's this just change in shear right the change in shear at the concentrated load is equal to the the, the concentrated force okay right if it's pointing down you essentially when you're going left to right it points it goes down okay this, this is going left to right. And then same thing with concentrated moments right here. If I have like a concentrated moment, let's say it's going, uh, woo, let's say it's going like this right here. Okay. Right here. And this is, we had like a M1, M1, M2. And if I want to draw my moment diagram, this is my moment diagram. I would have like an M1, a concentrated moment, and M2. M2, M1. The constant, so change in moment is equal to my, I'll call this M0, equal to M0. Okay, it's like a shift down. All right? Yeah? Okay, that's what the concentrated moments did. Okay, so let's, uh, um, I think that's enough talking. 
right here. Now let's do a let's do a problem graphically. Okay. We'll draw the shear, the internal axial shear and moment graphically in the next video. Okay.